So, Pastor, I get asked a lot of questions about the Christian faith. Some of those questions are asked by people who are very sincere and wanting to know the answer, but others are asked from a place of strong skepticism. Did you know that both the sincere inquirer and the doubter deserve an answer? The Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter 3.15, Always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you. Always be ready. People need answers. And probably one of the most frequent questions that people ask is, what makes Christianity such a big deal? I mean, can I be saved if my faith is in something else? Like what? Well, what about being a follower of Islam? There are 1.3 billion Muslims in this world. Can their faith lead them to salvation? That is to heaven? Or what about Hinduism with its 1.2 billion people? Or Buddhism, which has over half a billion followers? Or what about just being a good person? Is it a legitimate path to heaven? A lot of people are hoping so. Did you know that the Bible speaks of only one way to get to heaven? I knew a woman who used to say that there are many paths up the, to the top of the mountain. In other words, many paths to God, to his heaven. It's a comforting thought, but is it true? We need to understand some things about God. God, the Bible tells us, God is holy. The word holy of appears in the Bible 637 times. And in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word is kadosh. And in the New Testament, Greek, it is agios. And in both cases, the word holy means set apart. Set apart. Specifically, it means that God is set apart from sin. He cannot sin and he cannot receive sinners into heaven. And since the day that Adam and Eve disobeyed God, there has always been plenty of sin to go around. Indeed, since the day Adam fell, every human ever born of the seed of the man has come into this world stained in their souls with something called original sin. And it means that sin is present in us because we were born in it. Sin is manifested today in the things we do, and yet we should have avoided doing. Sin is also present in our inactions, the things that we should have done but didn't. By definition, sin includes evil thoughts, lustful thoughts, bad intents, even when we don't actually carry those intents out. It includes pride and using coarse language. It includes envy and jealousy and, and even harboring bitterness toward others. It is found in every moment of unforgiveness that we harbor in our hearts. Sin is everywhere. Big picture. God cannot allow unforgiving sinners into his heaven. He just can't because he is holy. Heaven is a clean place and God will not having, have us tracking in our sin all over his heaven like tracking in mud from your shoes on your mother's clean kitchen floor. Do you realize that we have been heaping up all kinds of sin in our lives since we came out of the womb? Psalm 58 verse 3 says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. That's the original sin. Sounds pretty helpless to ever reach heaven, doesn't it? I researched the top 10 religions in this world to see what pathway they teach to find peace with God. Not every religion regards uh, heaven in the same way, but all of them teach a path where if people would follow it, they'll reach paradise. In my study, it became clear that virtually every religion has a recognition that they have to do something to get right with God. They recognize sin. It's not just the Bible. All religions uh, teach a need to make amends to the creator. Now, what do these major religions teach? 
Well, each may have their prayers and their pilgrimages and certain other specifics that they deem necessary. But can I tell you something? At the heart of each religion is essentially the same thing. Islam has its five pillars, which include good works. The Hindus teach accumulating good karma, in other words, good works. Buddhism teaches an eightfold path, which is essentially a list of good works. Sikhism aims to achieve union with God through good works. And I could go on with Judaism, Baha'i, Jainism, Shinto, uh, Confucianism. They're all similar in their bottom line, teaching that good works play a necessary part in achieving peace with God. But the good you do today does not erase the sins of yesterday. No. Would you let a murderer off the hook because he turns his life around and coaches the Little League? No. A murder has been committed and it must be paid for. And your sin is a blemish that no amount of good, no amount of personal sacrifice can wash away. And yet such works, <laughs> they're the centerpiece to get to God in all those religions that I mentioned. Do you see the problem? Let me sum this up. Here it is. All human religions are about man trying to appease God through doing good works and sacraments and maybe some personal sacrifice. They're all essentially the same. Now, how is biblical Christianity different? Well, it's radically different. The Bible does not teach that good works have anything to do with finding forgiveness with God. Rather, it starts with an understanding that no man can save himself. Man is condemned. He is dead in sin. He's without any hope in himself. But watch, this is where God himself enters this tragic picture. And he changes everything. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Here's the thing. You cannot save yourself no matter what you do. But God loves you. He still loves you. And he recognizes that you are helpless in your sin. So he sent help. He sent his own son, Jesus. Jesus came and paid for your sins by dying for them on the cross and rising again. All those sins that you could never pay for yourself. The Apostle Paul wrote, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son. The law in the Bible is what teaches us right and wrong. In other words, it teaches us what sin is. The law can point out right and wrong, but here's the thing. It does not provide us with any power to actually keep the law, to do the right thing. But we just read what God, what the law could not go do, God did. Well, by sending us his son. Christianity is different in that it, 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 it that it's not about us finding God because we can't. We can't reach him by him finding us. Christianity is different, not in, in that it is not about us finding God, but it's about God finding us. Christ came to earth to take our sins upon himself, to pay the cost so that we could become children of God. No earthly religion can do that. No other religion. It's not about what you do. It's not about your good works. It's about the work of Christ and him alone, what he did for you. Have you received his gift to, to you, the gift of life? Receive it. Thanks for watching.